During the early 1900s, support for populism and progressivism intensified due to the hardships endured by factory workers, railroad workers, farmers, and other blue-collar workers during this time period. In this era, common laborers had very little benefits or incentives to working. They had to work long hours in hazardous areas with bad working conditions and received very little pay to compensate. Most of these laborers had recently immigrated and did not originally know that they had a voice in the government. Once these blue-collar workers learned of the basics of American politics from fellow workers, they went and joined unions in order to get their voices heard. The origin of American populism was in the early 1890s, when farmers, laborers, and middle-class activists founded an independent party known as the People's Party, also known as the Populist Party. The creation of the Populist Party was driven by the interests of the common man, and the Civil War did little to stem support for populism. The Civil War specifically was a major factor in the formation of the Populist Party because it limited southern wheat through war and drought, which in turn led many southern farmers into poverty. The Populist Party was officially established in 1892 after the Farmers Alliance and Knights of Labor Unions merged. The influence of the Populist Party was nothing to scoff at. There existed three major populists in Congress in Tom Watson of Georgia, Jeremiah Simpson of Kansas, and Marion Cannon of California. There were also three populist senators in William A. Peffer of Kansas, William B. Allen of Nebraska, and Marion Butler of North Carolina. Populists also held key offices in many states, including North Carolina, Colorado, and Kansas. In fact, support for populism was so great that populist presidential candidate James B. Weaver garnered more than one million votes. Although the number may pale in comparison to the main parties, keep in mind that this is the most successful a third party has been up to that point in American history. The main ideology of populism revolves around the common man. They believe that the common man should be active in government and should have a chance to succeed in society. Such are the ideals that America was founded on. Although many Americans viewed populism as an anti-capitalist movement, populism, ideologically, is not directed against the capitalist system. What populism stood for was the idea of the common man uniting against the oppression of a big, usually unfair institution. For example, the railroad companies. In response to the state of the economy after the Panic of 1893, William Jennings Bryan stood for the Free Silver and Easy Money Movement. On that basis, he was nominated by the Populists, Democrats, and National Silver Parties as their candidate for the 1896 presidential election. Bryan and his supporters fought hard and zealously, but in the end, lost to a 51 to 46.7% popular vote and 271 to 176 electoral vote. This election proved to be the Populists' greatest achievement, but led to their downfall as well. Their policy of a 16 to 1 silver to gold ratio was adopted by the Democratic Party and was put onto the national spotlight but their policy was also being adopted by the Democrats. This meant that although populist ideas were getting national recognition and improvement, there was no reason to support the populists, as a more prominent Democrat party also had what the common man wanted. Following the assassination of William McKinley in 1901, progressivism started to find its place in America, as Theodore Roosevelt, although Republican by party, started to put into effect many policies that could have been considered progressive, such as his famous trust-busting endeavors. Progressivism is seen by quite a few to be the same as populism, but the truth is, they had their differences. For one, progressivism was mainly supported by the middle class, who felt that they were being exploited by the rich. Progressivism also focused on changing the American political system, as opposed to populism, which tried to reform the economic system. Progressivism stands for a more ethical and less selfish America. It advocated using the government to help the people. Many ideas sprouted from the minds of progressives, attempting to make America a more righteous and benevolent country, particularly appealing to children and women. Although progressives believed in the fair treatment of all and the helping of other Americans, one group they neglected more or less intentionally were minorities. Roosevelt, for example, remained stagnant in civil rights because of the outrage sparked by his invitation of Booker T. Washington to the White House for dinner. The reason progressivism and populism get tied together often is because of the implementing of populist ideas by Teddy Roosevelt during his presidency. These included making safer working conditions mandatory, a decreased work week, and other pro-labor laws. Populist ideas were becoming accepted and used by the progressives, but that in no way meant that populists were gaining favor with progressives. In fact, many progressives strongly opposed populism because of its seemingly communist origins of the poor working class rising up to revolutionize the country. Although neither a progressive or populist candidate ever won the presidential election, their party's influences were what defined America in the near future. Such ideas like a federal income tax 
insured bank deposits, and antitrust laws are proof that both the populists and progressives have left their mark on American history.